Welcome back to Dano Does Things. I am Dano and I have a double-sized update for you today. If you have been watching along, you know that I am trying to become a paid artist in 2023 and my focus for July and August was doing craft markets. Previously, I had been focused on my YouTube channel here and my Etsy, but I really wanted to try a craft market and branch out and I actually ended up doing three craft markets over the months of July and August and I will get into sort of how much I made there and also what it cost me. First, a quick review of my other income streams, YouTube and Etsy. For Etsy, I made $4.40 in July, which was selling two digital prints. And in August, I made a big $0, which was totally expected because I was saving up all of my inventory for the craft markets. So I wasn't posting anything on Etsy. So, I mean, it makes sense. You don't put anything up, you don't sell anything. As for YouTube, I made $50 in July and about $43 in August. I was really happy about that because I only posted one long form video in July and two in August. So this was mostly passive income that my YouTube channel was making me, which is really cool to see that it can continue on even if I'm not always churning out new content. Okay, now the juicy bits, let's talk craft markets. I made a total of $1,300 over three craft markets. Now that sounds great at the surface, but that's all revenue and does not factor in the costs that I had to attend these craft markets. And so I'm gonna let you know about those and how I came out in the end. I spent $430 on my market setup and displays. That included buying a folding table, a tablecloth, lights, um, making my DIY wooden display boards and a wagon to transport it all in. In my opinion, if you're going to be doing craft markets multiple times, all of those things are worth the investment. You can definitely rent things like a table, but in my opinion, it's way more of a hassle if you're going to be using it multiple times because then you're dealing with calling the vendors, making sure they have what you want available, picking it up, returning it. It's just a lot. So investing in a folding table and one that is the size that you want it to be is super helpful if you're going to be doing multiple craft markets. The tablecloth was pretty cheap and it really, I think, upped how professional my table looked and the lights were also super necessary because I did one of the markets outside and it went past dark so I definitely needed the lights so people could actually look at my stuff and shop. The wagon was also insanely helpful. I got one of those collapsible ones that you see like a lot of families and parents using, but it was perfect for transporting all of my setup supplies. Depends on the markets you're going to. Sometimes you can drive right up to your spot and unload everything and that's fine. But other times you're walking a distance, bringing in your stuff and having that wagon to do it and not having to physically carry everything is so much nicer. I also DIY'd my two wooden stands for my displays. I'm a fairly handy person, I'd like to think, and so they weren't that hard to make, but they were pretty time consuming to make. I drilled each individual hole and I cut each individual peg. And while I think they looked really good, and I think I would invest in that again, it's really gonna depend on what kind of things you're selling. I sell things like wall hangings and those really needed a pegboard or some way to hang them so that you could actually see them. And I think having my earrings on a display really helped them be seen as well. One thing I did not invest in was a tent. Now a tent is a bigger investment. It's gonna cost you some money, especially if you wanna get like a decent tent. And if you're doing a lot of craft markets, then I would definitely recommend it. But if you're just starting out, definitely don't invest in one right away. That's something I think that renting would be super helpful to see if you like the tent and then investing in it if you know that you're going to be doing multiple outdoor markets or markets where you're gonna be setting up a tent. I really would have liked to have one, but I did fine without it. And I'm gonna see if I'm gonna do a lot more markets next summer, maybe I'll invest in one then. 
Market fees are going to vary from market to market, and I paid a total of 330 in market fees over the three different markets. The first one was 160 for a six by six space that I had all to myself. The second one was $50 for a solo 10 by 10 space. And the third one was $120 for a, wait, that math doesn't work. Oh no, it does. <laughs> And the third was $120 for a 10 by 10 space that I split with another maker. I can totally get into the types of market places that you can get in another video, but just know that the fees are going to vary depending on what market you attend. And those fees are gonna to go towards uh, paying the coordinators, advertisements, promotions, and rental equipment. For materials, this is like a very conservative number because I only started keeping track of the materials that I bought specifically for these markets and I didn't have the numbers for materials that I already owned and then used at these markets. So this number is probably a lot higher, which, uh, you know, is fine, I figured. But my cost specific to this market was $115. There were some additional costs as well. And one thing that I do recommend getting is some sort of uh, credit or debit card system where you can take cards at your stall. I got the Square Reader and the hardware itself was $70 and I did have to pay fees uh, when people used it and that totaled up to about $20. In my experience, people nowadays like expect you at markets to have a way to pay by card and I feel like if you don't have some way to accept non-cash payments, you're really losing out on sales. My cash sales were only about 20% of my total sales and the other 80 were all card sales. So I was happy that I invested in that and had an easy way to take those transactions. I also had some other miscellaneous costs like getting a cash box and buying storage bins and parking and gas and that came up to about $120. So now if we take that $1,300 revenue and minus all my expenses, we get a total of $215 in profit, which is really great. It's just not as uh, flashy as $1,300 sounds. And also if I factor in how many hours it took me to make things for the market, prep for the market, attend the market, I could probably pay myself like $5 an hour, which is uh, way lower than minimum wage and uh, is kind of annoying, <laughs> to be honest. However, now that I've made some initial investments into the markets, I'm not gonna be having to do all those expenses every time. Like I already have the square reader, I already have my table, I already have my displays. So now going forward, I would really only have to put money into materials as well as upgrading any displays that I would want. So markets going forward should pay off more, but that being said, I am taking a break from markets. They are a lot of work. They're really, really fun and I really enjoyed them, but they do take a lot of effort so I'm gonna go back to YouTube for a bit so hopefully you'll be seeing me a little more around here if you would like to see me do a more in-depth video about doing craft markets for the first time let me know in the comments as always thanks for watching along you can follow me on Instagram at Dano does things to see some more behind-the-scenes content and of course subscribe here on YouTube to get more updates thanks for watching goodbye